come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're glad you could enjoy us for our post-movie chat. We do this every Saturday night. We sit around, we watch a movie that's chosen round robin by one of the Freak Show members, and then we talk about it for your listening pleasure and enjoyment. We hope you'll check us out on, or give us a like or subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn, Google Play, and more wherever you found us. And we also hope that you'll write to us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Twitter? At Sat Freak Show. By email? Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or Instagram, where we're oh, Saturday yeah. Night Freak Show. Show. We're on Instagram now. Guys, we're on Instagram now. now. We are. Yeah. We're post photos and boomerangs, apparently. And boomerangs. We're Just boomerang did one. It up. Just did yep. one. Yeah, she was totally setting up the mics for the recording, moving the knobs yeah. and everything. Sound. Tech. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Holly? Yeah. Thumbs right. up. <laughs> Wires and whatnot. <laughs> All right, tonight tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by Colin, and we watched. Colin, uh, what did we watch tonight? What shouldn't the? we like ask you that? <laughs> oh, yeah. we I, we didn't have even introduced ourselves. No. Who are no. these internet what? radio superstars? Sean, Holly, Michaela, and I'm the aforementioned Colin, who chose tonight's movie. <laughs> you did. What did you choose, Colin? What did you bestow upon us tonight? Uh, we watched. What crypt did we open? And what movie did we find? We unwrapped. Oh, no. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Already, Mike, take it away. The 1932 version of The Mummy. The Mummy. Starring Boris Karloff and directed by Carl Freund. 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 Carl what Freund. Freund do? He was a uh, cinematographer on Dracula the year before. Wow. This is uh, 1932. That was 1931. But he also invented the unchained camera technique. Which means basically that he was the guy who figured out, hey, you can take this thing off the tripod <laughs> and what? move it around. No, no yeah. way. Handheld? Shut up. <laughs> well, I don't know if it was right. handheld. Somebody, yeah. <laughs> we're just like, we're going to move this this way. Look at all the camera song. angles we can <laughs> like get. A little shake or a slight movement to the left before they moved left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were still figuring out at this time. It was a little shaky, but you know. Yeah. So I chose this movie because, well, as the time that you're listening to this, the new Mummy has Timely. already crashed and burned probably at the box office. <laughs> Timely. But Universal Pictures is starting their new Dark Universe, yep. which is a... The interconnected universe of their Universal Monsters. They're trying anyway. Yeah. Because Marvel had so much goddamn success right. at it, and King Kong and Godzilla are doing it, and, and that's DC's what everybody doing wants it. Nowadays. And they're well, like mother- interconnected universe. And they're like motherfuckers. We're the original franchise. Hello, Universal we're Monsters. We're the original Come connected on. universe. Yeah, mm-hmm. the yep. Universal Monsters. Yep. Yeah. You wonder how much those original movies were connected. Well, I found out. Oh. Because I went back. And this In week, and watched all of them <laughs> again. Well, did you? Okay, so uh, <laughs> I did watch in preparation for tonight's event. Over the last month, oh. I have watched every goddamn mummy movie that wow. has ever been made. That's not That's entirely dedication. true. Uh, wow. But I did watch. Uh, should I give titles? The yeah. Universal. Yeah, throw them out there. Okay, yeah. so titles I watched years. Uh, the and, Mummy 1932. Okay. Then you jump ahead like 10 years. Is and this our first? This is our first Mummy. This is the first okay. Mummy, the one that we watched. And this came about because uh, I think 10 years prior to this, they had discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun. So uh, Egypt right. was big on everybody's mind at this point. And okay. there was the curse of the pharaohs, right? Mm-hmm. Which I'm using air quotes because people associated with that dig ended up dying in, you know, unexplicable ways. And so they said, well, there must be everybody who's associated with this. There's a curse. So, you know, there never actually was one. It was just the pop culture invented it. You don't know that. Listen to her. (laughs) So, so, (laughs) So, but it's strange to me that it took 10 years, right, after this movie, before they did, like, another one. It was in, like, 1940, 41, something like that. And then they did four movies called The Mummy's Hand, The Mummy's Tomb, The Mummy's Curse, and The Mummy's Ghost. I may have those out of order. A ghost of a mummy. Yeah. And then you have to jump into... So that's, like, the 40s. Mm-hmm. And then you go into the 1950s, and then Hammer Films comes around. Mm. They remake 
the well, they called it the Mummy. It had Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee in it. Of course, because it's Hammer. You know what? Here's but here's <laughs> what's true. Yeah. <laughs> when we think of the Mummy, you think of a guy in bandages, kind of. At least mm-hmm. I did because right. when yes. I grew up, you know, Tradi- these ones were traditionally, still traditionally. I think yes. that's yeah. everybody's that's general concept the, of it. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. We're mimicking no, the, the guy with the arm over his heart. We're doing the arm gestures yeah. right yeah. now. I'm honestly curious if we're like the last generation that has that picture, though. To be seriously, I, probably. Like, can you, I don't. I wonder if kids nowadays even like recognize the image of a mummy. I mean, yeah, the guy in the in a, in a maybe because in a traditional of like Scooby Doo and stuff, you know. Scooby-Doo, but like, that's true. Like, Scooby Doo is yeah. Out. Books. I think the image that imagery still is exists. Is still there? And I think the imagery comes out around Halloween. He's a Halloween not icon, but but right. beyond right. Halloween, I don't think they have any context for it. Yeah. They might not. Because yeah, when's the last time you saw like a bandage wrapped mummy in a movie? Like yeah. the Monster Squads right. in the eighties, and right. and if they did, they didn't stay that way very long. Yeah. The only thing, yeah. the only thing I can think of is like Night at the Museum, and that was definitely not like bandage wrap mummies. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it's yeah. like uh, still Halloween costumes or something like that, or window decorations. That's what that I'm you... wondering though if it's if it's still even like a part of pop culture in Halloween, like not for, for kids, much. for kids, I mean, like, yeah, I think for adults maybe. I but... think it's just classic Halloween iconography, but they don't so? have any context for it. Is what I think it is. Yeah. I think no. it's just kind of like, like my something that's always been there. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's something mm-hmm. that's always been there. So yeah, okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah because kid mummies did bring now, up like a mummy the other day for some reason. Your kid, yeah, he brought up a mummy. Really. Yeah, I don't know what context he saw it, but he brought up a mummy of some sort. On um, like a cartoon or something, maybe? Uh, it's probably from, he, probably I mean, it's from in Scooby-Doo, I'm going to say. Yeah. Yeah. Scooby-Doo, I'm gonna, I, yeah. I hope it lives on through things like yeah. Scooby-Doo. Yeah. But I it's strange so. to me that like when you go back and watch the actual, well, the original mummy, which we watched tonight, uh, you don't really get the bandaged guy. Mm-hmm. Only at no. the very beginning of this movie do you see him mm-hmm. desiccated as the wrapped corpse, right. and then you Even know. He, then you get uh, no. I mean, that's all you see him as is the desiccated corpse. You don't see him moving or anything; just bits and pieces, which I like. I think that's some of the best cin- cinematography in this movie is that oh, that scene. I really like, like yeah. that scene. It's so strong because like yeah. you just see the hand like reaching over the scroll, yep. or like when he first starts moving, you see his hands moving down like kind of his arms, and yeah. then like and then you cut to just like trails of his bandages yep. going out the door, and I that's like it. That. Like there was yeah. no full on shot of it's, him. You, you look at it and you're like, that's classic cinematography. Yeah. Like shots like that. Like that still plays, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And, and I liked, deliberately, sorry, go ahead. I, I liked it. That scene too, that there was no score. It was completely mm-hmm. like silent when mm-hmm. that whole thing was happening. Which made it's it quite like a bit creepier. of this. Yeah. 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 Cause you see a guy go insane, which is, this is the thing that I think is missing from like modern horror. Film. Like nobody, and maybe a modern person confronted with the supernatural wouldn't have the same kind of reaction but mm-hmm. it's scarier to me when i see a guy lose his mind he just start laughing mm-hmm. uncontrollably because he's in shock mm-hmm. right. of seeing this dead creature get up and move and they deliberately keep the you from seeing it which is the thing you know that we're talking about here that you only see the hand or the bandages going out the door and you're like, I want to see the fucking mummy. And they're like, no, 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 it's too horrible for you to put your your eyes on. You go mad like this guy. You just see in the after effect of it. But there was, uh, but the 19, so, okay. Well, if we, if we go with the, there's a name game in these remakes, right? Uh, In the first mummy movie that we watched, the mummy's name is Imhotep. Imhotep. The princess is Anaxanamen. And and his name, when he comes back, he uh, 10 years later, he adopts the uh, persona of Ardeth Bay. Right. Mm-hmm. OK, so you got to remember those names. Right. Okay. In the 40s movies, they do a series. Now, the 40s ones, uh, some of the three of them starred Lon Chaney Jr. as the mummy. He is wandering around bandaged dude, walking around with his arm out, strangling people. And they have a. You know, it, those are sequels. It's one story. Uh-huh. Basically, you know, each one of them is a remake of the one before it. But the mummy is Karis. Uh, the princess is Ananka. They were dug up by a guy named Steve Banning, who in the second one has a son named John Banning. Okay. When Hammer in 1950 makes the color mummy with uh, Peter Cushing and, and the Christopher Lee. That's it's, the color of money joke. It's the, the mummy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. Thanks. <laughs> Show me the mummy for the Tom Cruise one. Uh, oh. the, uh, <laughs> Sir, you're tying it all together, yeah. now, aren't you? We're all, we're all doing Put, very well. Today. Putting a bow on it. Yeah. Coming yeah. back around here. But those movies, are, sorry, that movie, The Mummy is Karis. The, Peter Cushing plays John Banning and The Princesses Ananka. So they're actually remaking the 40s movies. Yeah. 
And then in the and then Hammer made three other movies that were all standalones, standalone mummy movies. There was The Curse of the Mummy's Tomb, The Mummy's Shroud, and Blood from the Mummy's Tomb, which had the first female mummy. Well, unless you count Ananka coming back. And, sure. You know, but that was about a female mummy. It was based on a Bram Stoker novel called, or short story called Jewel of Seven Stars. And then you go to 1999 yeah. when the Brendan Fraser one comes around and it's Imhotep and Oxenam and, and uh, Ardeth Bay is the uh, the Oded Fair character who's you know trying to keep the uh, the mummy. Parent. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, I see. I was trying to remember like what are the names of that movie because that's my greatest experience with the mummy and to see what they took from because I remember Imhotep and Anaxenamon and all those stuff. I didn't know he yeah, was Ardeth I mean, Bay. It's not like a direct remake, but they're sure. taking elements from the Boris Karloff one. Yes. Mm-hmm. Finally, and re, yes. uh, re you know purposing them, uh-huh. and now we have the Tom Cruise one, which yes, I did go see the other night. Uh, so I'm all caught up on all, on all, right. all the mummies. Nice. Yep. So what, what do you, you want to know? Well, I've seen them all. What questions do you have? So Tom Cruise. <laughs> I mean, we, I got to know about this mummy. Well, where like, does the think, 2017 Colin? mummy rank? Yeah. yeah. Well, they're doing a, uh, like they're calling it the mummy, but at this point it's like, you know, we're going to take our classic monsters and remake them, but it's not the classic monster. This no. is the first it's, time no, they made not. one up. You know, oh, and this they? is Amonet, you know, Princess uh, Amonet, who basically, you know, offends the gods and then comes back, uh, you know, is brought back to life by Tom Cruise. Um, and there's a lot of world building for this, you know, interconnected universe. universe that they're trying to put together, which doesn't entirely. Well, I mean, it's hard to say that it, I would say it doesn't work as a standalone film. Mm hmm. Uh, but you know, it's one of those movies that I, th- and it's been greeted by, you know, nobody likes Tom Cruise anymore, you know, and nobody, well, you know, wants to They don't to really see... have a good reason to, yeah, <laughs> unless, you, you know, know. lived. I repeats the last, uh, I like that movie. I do too. Yeah, I like that it a lot. That was pretty cool. Really nobody saw movie. it, but it was pretty nobody awesome. Saw, but it's a really Go- good movie. Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol was my last good Tom Cruise Not experience. Rogue Nation. Even Rogue Nations, he's decent in those movies, but there seems to be like in the United States anyway, everybody yeah. hates Tom Cruise. Yeah. Overseas, not so see, much. Yeah. yeah, they love him over there. It was like mm. huge in soul or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but I think that the, and the fact that like they're doing another mummy movie, everybody's like, yeah, they're remaking the Brendan Fraser franchise, right. quote unquote. And I'm I'm like, this is, this, they're, they're, they're trying to, you know, build like uh, this classic. It goes back to like 85 years, right? Exactly. It's not just the 1999 one, but I think everybody's frame of references. That one was such a big hit. Their version of the Wolfman and their version of Dracula, Dracula Untold, didn't do so well. Mm-hmm. So they're like, well, who's our first one? We're going to remake the one that worked. We're going to do The Mummy. Right. But. Uh, so I have a question for you. I have many I'm okay. all set. I've been preparing for a month. So <laughs> here's the critic consensus on the Mummy 2017 as of recording this. Lacking the campy fun of the franchise's most recent entries and failing to deliver many monster movie thrills, the Mummy suggests a speedy unraveling for the dark universe. Do you agree with that or do you disagree with that? Um, it is funnier than they're making it out to be. Like it has, if you see it in a crowd of people, I mean, I don't know how it would play by itself, but there are a lot of jokes. Was there a crowd of people when you went? There was <laughs> exactly. That's audience. a good question. Was there a crowd? It was, there were less people there than Alien Resurrection, but more people than when I saw Wonder Woman. Really weird. There were three people in the theater for the 3D showing, and that could be huh. why. They didn't That's want probably to see what time did well, you go? Yeah, exactly. What day? Oh. <laughs> yeah, see, yeah. I went opening okay. night for Wonder Woman, and it was exactly. packed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've okay. seen Wonder Woman three times, and it's been pretty full all three times. Yeah. Yeah. You see it in 3D? No. Okay. No. I don't like 3D. I don't think many people do because no. they didn't go to it. It doesn't add anything to the movie. No. So the mummy, the mummy, um, yeah. it, the <sighs> currently sitting at 17%. But yeah, I know. But I, see, I think that is the hatred that people have toward Tom Cruise and the idea of remaking the mummy. I think this movie, once it gets on video and people see it, they'll like it more. And once you get removed from the weekend when it went up against wonder woman, once yeah. you're like 20 years on and you have 18 of these fucking universal uh, you know, dark universe movies, it'll look better. You know, once people actually see it, they'll be a little less, uh, you know, um, um, hard on it. You know, it'll be like, eh, it's not great. It's stupid, but it's a lot of fun and it moves fast. Yeah. But I think you, you probably don't want to see it right now. <laughs> you want to see it before Bride of Frankenstein comes out, which is the sure. next one. So you've got like two years to catch up with the mummy. Seems it's like a long time. It yeah. borrows from like other film French which is just weird I'm not like what? I'm, well 
American Werewolf in London. Oh, I heard there life was a force? scene. There was a- <laughs> yeah, life force. Wow, what? Yeah. It's a life well, I mean, force ripoff. There, like, That's shocking. Yeah, that's absolutely that. shocking. So I sat there, you know, and everything. Were you just like looking at like, life force? Life force. <laughs> I've right? seen this before. But the way that it played for me was like. Uh, This isn't like they're not doing anything new at all. Even what they think is new, I have seen before. But a 15 year old, you know, kid going to see the movie, this would be the first time that they're exposed to some of this stuff. Maybe it works. There's more gothic horror imagery in it than I expected. This movie is like perfect for you. That's right up your alley. Yeah, I know. So that's why I kind of, I'm like, even it's a guilty pleasure where like I still enjoyed watching it, but I can't defend it as a good movie. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. And so your mileage will probably vary. If you don't like Tom Cruise and you're, you know, (laughs) you know, it's like everything he's associated with sucks and, you know, the, the action is you know, overwrought and the, you know, uh, uh, Russell Crowe's character became, becomes an exposition engine, mm. you know, where he's just yeah. dumping always, shit yeah. at you to build this like gigantic universe. And Maybe. some of the characters motivations are like, huh? So yeah, it's from the guy who spearheaded the Transformers franchise. And, you know, oh, I, uh, I was going to say, do you want to go through the turd list? That is Alex Kurt Kurtzman. Oh, Kurtzman. Oh, no. um, he, he, it's either great or it's a giant turd or it's say. a little bit of both. Like, I think after looking at his list, I think the best thing he's done for me personally was he wrote the Watchmen, which I actually okay. really liked the Watchmen. I thought yeah. that was uh, David Hayter. He, he wrote, he was a writer on a it. Writer, yeah. He was credited with a writing credit on mm-hmm. it. Um, it was, uh, Kurtzman and Orsi for a long time. Time, yeah. They? yeah, they were partners, and that's what we're yep. having, like, uh, Transformers. Star yeah. He Trek. wrote Lost. Transformers 1 and 2. Fringe. Yeah, yeah. Lost and Fringe, yeah, yep. yeah. He wrote Transformers 1 and 2, Star Trek 1 and 2, Cowboys and Aliens, Amazing Spider-Man 2, the super expensive turd we talked uh, about earlier that? off mic, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, God. <laughs> and he's, he wrote, but he wrote and directed the 2017 Mummy. So, yeah. not just writing, Jesus. writing and, and directing. He's the showrunner, so. basically, like, yeah, of sure. the... I mean yeah. that's the thing. Like you have to go into this oh, movie. Do. Yeah, he does. He either does amazing movies or yeah. absolutely terrible movies. Yeah. Or, yeah. But either way, they usually make a lot of money. Yeah. So. On this one, you know, maybe not. One, yeah. No, it'll make twelve its money million domestically so though. far. Oh yeah. <laughs> Internationally, it's going to do fine. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sure by the end of the weekend it'll be they saying like thirty something. It'll it'll do okay. And again, I think because it's built in as a franchise, people will go back and look at it if they like the third movie, whatever the third movie is. Assuming we get one, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and which I think Universal at this point, the way you build these things is you, you know, you, you're gonna do it, right? Yeah. You're committed, pretty much. Basically, yeah, I was gonna say it'll look like, better in hindsight. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the pilot to. episode of like a new dark universe. And TV the pilots show. always suck. is it really though? Is isn't Dracula Untold technically the more pilot of this no, universe? I think they start no. now. They, they so made, they're just ignoring the retconning I Wolfman so. and Dracula Untold, and pre- pretending that oh, never yeah, happened, and starting gone. all over again. Yeah, Colin's beloved Wolfman is going to be gone. Yeah. Well, I know because that's different. my issue. Is like the Wolfman to me was the, like that was a um, like reverential. I thought remake of the 1940s Wolfman. Yeah, yeah. You mm-hmm. know, done with a big budget. Uh, you know, it looked fantastic. It moved fantastic. It, the drama where you know it was like mm-hmm. I liked that movie. I love that movie. To be yeah. honest with you, it's a great but name to here. Me, yeah, yeah. All I great wanted movie. was I yeah, love, it I really love is. Movie. Great. I yeah. love that movie. Right. I'll, I'll yeah. save my Hold story on. for wrap ups about okay. that movie. But, <laughs> but I, I, it's like, why can't you just like? Which I think you know was also echoed by Rick Baker, the guy who did the makeup effects for that. Was like he hoped that it would bring back the Universal monsters, mm-hmm. not necessarily in a connected universe. But just kind of like mm-hmm. it'll make a wolf man that'll will give back. somebody interest to do creature from the black lagoon that'll give somebody the interest to do you know another right. mummy or Frankenstein or whatever. And I you will didn't say have to that like link them all together. That would have been a good starting point to do all this. Mm-hmm. It's just like it was. When did the, that come out? February 2010. 2010. 2010? It's just like seven yeah. years mm-hmm. too late. Like that would have been a good starting out point for all of this. You had mm-hmm. a few more scenes in there because yeah, I mean if you're going to make a connected universe, you have to con- you know bring in characters that will be seen throughout the rest of the movie, uh, rest of the universe. And you connect it a little bit more to a bigger world. And uh, yeah, mm-hmm. that could have been a good starting point for everybody. Well, the way that they did it originally in the forties, right. It was, mm-hmm. I think there was a series of, uh, at least four Frankenstein movies, maybe like th- four Dracula films. And then there was the, uh, Wolfman or Frankenstein meets the Wolfman was the first one that put them together. Mm-hmm. And then after that, uh, house of Frankenstein, follows the events of that. I mean, 
what they they always seem to do in those old movies is the creatures, even though they've been killed at the finale of the last one, <laughs> somehow show up okay at the beginning. Except for the Frankenstein monster, I notice they're always digging him up from wherever he landed <laughs> at the yeah. end of the last one. But like Larry Talbot's up and wandering around, oh, Dracula's sure. up and wandering around. You're like, didn't he? They kill you in the last one? Why do they keep going to find the Frankenstein monster? What do they need him for? What is his purpose of? being brought back every time uh he holds the key to uh eternal life basically like you because you he just when he he dies he doesn't a guy made of dead people yeah you just like apply electricity and he will bounce back to life and so everybody's like trying to get him either as a power uh vehicle for power like Mm -hmm. if i have him working for me because he's brainless you know basically he's the you get to be the svengali send the guy out or he uh will cure somehow you'll be able to cure you know lycanthropy or vampirism mm-hmm. through the technology that uh, dr frankenstein used to create the monster that's basically the linking through line through those problem. movies Frankenstein. there you go that's followed by house of dracula so it's uh yeah uh, frankenstein meets the wolfman house of frankenstein house of dracula are the three like monster rallies. Did you watch Abbott and Costello meet the mummy? Isn't there? In- yeah, I did. I mean, yeah, you've <laughs> yeah. never seen that. I, I, I kind right? of enjoy that movie. Like it's, <sighs> it is what it is, but I enjoy it. Well, it's Abbott and Costello. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's fun, but you'd never seen it before. Hey, no. I, yeah. How could, but I didn't how like their you? mummy. I was uh, uh, like watching. I'm like, this is an Abbott and Costello movie with a mummy in it. Is yeah. that what keeps, well, yeah. is that what keeps <laughs> you going back to these, Colin? Is it, is it the monster? Is it the actual monsters? Like, do you like those designs? Is it story? Like, what is it? Is it all come together for you for that? Yeah, I think it's what, what a combination that? of like mood and atmosphere, the monster design, just the general, you know, uh, I was going to say atmosphere again, but I think it's just the the world, I guess, that they yeah. inhabit. Because it's like the, when you watch these movies, you're like, when in the fuck does this take place? You can't tell. They don't like pin it down mm-hmm. like or they, you know, because they have cars and they have telescopes and they have phones, but it takes place in like, you know, these made up like Viseria, you know, some <laughs> weirdly European town where there's a Burgermeister instead of a mayor and, you know, like all this kind of stuff. So it's like, what, ye- you know, is it the modern day? I can't yeah. tell, you know, there's this weird mixture of stuff and everybody, you know, speaks English, even though they're supposed to be German or Austrian or whatever. But- of course. Yeah, I was really confused by a lot of things like that in this movie. Yeah, like, in this I, one? In The Mummy? In this one, yeah. I don't it's really know where they Everyone were. knew every language when it was convenient Everyone to them. Everyone knew. Right. And I don't know where they were. There was like It was like the, the Cairo Museum, but at one point they said they weren't in Cairo. But there was palm trees. I don't know where they were. I think they were in Cairo. It started out in the Valley of the Kings and then at the British Museum. Yeah, but then... Or no, the British Expedition, right? Then the they British went, Expedition, yes. They went somewhere... And ten years later, did they go somewhere before that? Where they well, they met Boris Karloff at the British exhibition or right. ex, 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 excavation. excavation, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then moved to I think the Cairo Museum. So I think that's, the movie takes place yes. in Cairo. That's what I thought. Yes. But then at one point they say something about not being in Egypt. No, you heard things wrong. Did I? Well, they're at the Cairo <laughs> Museum for all of it. No, I'm I'm aware of that. That's why I was really confused by that moment. Well, either they but, screwed up or you heard something. But wrong. then again, I don't really know why she was all of a sudden dying either. I I feel like I missed something. She was there being too. replaced. Yeah, but all of a sudden, but all of a sudden they were just like, "Yeah, you're dying," and I'm like, "When did they figure this out?" <laughs> I mean, things happen quick in this movie, Holly. <laughs> like he's in love with her. Yeah, uh, that's true. Twenty minutes after he meets her. Twenty yeah. minutes. I yeah, attribute that quick. to the fact that nobody could fuck before they were married back in the day. So they yeah. fell in love like, married. let's get married. She's already laying down. <laughs> She's already laying down on a couch, You're you know. on the couch. What else do we need? <laughs> You're already in the position. I might as well just say I'm in love with you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, then you've got Boris Please, Karloff on the other side. seven years. I can't change anymore. Can we work out a love rhombus in this movie? Love there's no, rhombus. no, there's not there's enough characters no to be a rhombus. This is a triangle. This it was is pretty a much uh, yeah. Imhotep, her, and then. What if we bring Frank. in uh, Osiris and Isis? No, they're not really. Isis. No, yeah. no, Isis. That is not aged well. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Not at all. Unfortunately. You know, I remember uh, a Saturday morning cartoon, or not, it wasn't a cartoon, it was a live action show called um like something in isis and it was this egyptian it was like a wonder woman show i remember it was this woman who would like spin around and turn into like a superhero called mm-hmm. isis 
And yeah. I think you can look this up on She's like, an YouTube. Egyptian goddess, yeah, familiar. but that, that term is not age well, unfortunately. No. Like, well, that's why we just got to keep on using ISIL. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yes. Yeah. That's that's the ISIS way to is combat the Egyptian it. God. Yeah. <laughs> goddess or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And the American public will still never know the difference. Like, well, why? Why? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So this movie. Are we, wa- are, so we gonna, movie. are we walking through the story of this movie? Sure, why not? All right. Take us there. Kyle. Take us there. <laughs> well, we okay. Are to a day. <laughs> All right. So, well, this is what has always interested me about this movie is the missing ten years of this movie because yeah. you get what the, is Boris Karloff doing for these ten years? Yeah, yes. Yes. he's like regenerating his body. Well, I don't know because at the end he he's leaves dust. He leaves dust on her when he grabs her arm. He doesn't like to be touched, and yes. at the end he grabs her arm fragile. and leaves like uh, yeah. you know a, a mummy dust on her. He's yes. still very. I imagine papery, he's, yeah. he's got a spackle every now and yeah. then, and just get yeah, because his skin is so cracked. He's got to spackle that shit together. Dry and he's got the lines <laughs> on his face, but yes, every now and again he's just got to like wipe some paste on there, and yeah, that's why he wears a tunic that pretty much covers his entire body. Yeah. Because I imagine it's just a bone. Center. But this is fascinating to me, right? Because mm-hmm. the, the remake, uh, you know, the Imhotep, Witch. the Arnold Vosloo okay. Imhotep, uh, yes. would would suck the souls out of people mm-hmm. and, re, you know, basically restore his flesh. And so basically right. he's a human being kind of by the end of the movie or yes. you know, quarter of the way through, three quarters of the way through the movie. Yes. But in this one. He's just like got a cool apartment with a big bathtub. But like, the physiology is like he you mean is the Pensy still... from Harry Potter? <laughs> yeah, because he looks into it and sees things. <laughs> well, he's got like a you know the jacuzzi that tells the future. Yeah, I yeah, mean, that's yeah. awesome. I mean, yeah. everybody should have one of those. Yeah, hot hot time, time machine. Some time machine. <laughs> and he's got the cat that does some great cat thing. <laughs> yeah, cat acting. Oh, he does some great oh, cat thing. Oh, cat thing. Oh, hey, cat thing. Hey, my, hey, my cat makes that sound. Hey, he's about to throw up. Cat thing. <laughs> this is okay. going to go in the entry of uh, famous, famous yeah. uh, oh, yeah. animals there you go. of Hollywood. Yeah. Hey, that yes, cat's definitely dead. That cat? <laughs> oh, yeah. that cat is definitely dead now. Well, it's we got to trace much. the family well, yeah, the tree. The lineage is like, but, there's like, cats, and, like cats versus must-love dogs. Like, yeah, a cat in that but movie they got that cat to sit on a pillow animal. for an absurd amount of time. Have you ever made a cat sit in one? Yeah, yeah. I guarantee you. Like, he was standing up earlier, like, looking around, like he wanted to leave, but he could not leave. He could not leave. Yeah, they just glued him or stapled him on there. I mean, he I was, think he so. was a long haired cat. They could have velcroed him. I, I'm um, that cat stuck there. The yeah. 30s were a very different time. They there was no maybe, laws yeah, against yeah. that yet. There was yeah. no thing at the end. No, of the did you set. see her like with that dog and like the choke collar? Like that. Nah. Do- okay, that dog was legitimately freaked out about going in that building. Yeah. That dog was Dog's fighting like, her on the no. leash to go yeah. in that building, and she like forced it in there. Yeah. And then he was like, "Oh, your dog is scared." I was like, "No shit, yeah. the dog's been scared for the past half a block." Like trivia. You know the first movie that, in, or you know the movie that caused the formation of the American Humane Society uh, working in films. Lassie, National Velvet, Milo and Otis. It was Heaven's <laughs> Gate. Heaven, oh. Heaven's Gate. Yeah. Oh, what, what shit. happens to yeah. animals in Heaven's I can Gate? See that. Uh, a horse. I don't know they, the movie. Well, they were using dynamite and they blew horses. up a horse. And I think they keep Jesus. saying that that shot is in the movie, but I haven't seen it. I haven't been paying attention. I guess to like you know, but I guess Blown they blew up a horse, horse and Not it was sure like I've such a backlash that it was like. We are putting someone on, like, you know, every movie that yeah. has an animal involved from here on out. Well, and that dog's so leash was like day. a rope tied around yeah. its neck, yeah. so that didn't help that she dog had, not it, being it freaked like out. three inches yeah. of, like, space. Yeah. 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 But that hardcore. cat, like, I've never seen a cat sit in one place for that long in my no, entire life. <laughs> yeah. Unless the cat is almost dead. Especially next to a pool of water. Yeah. You know, like, that cat is chilling on a pillow next to a, It'd be a big pool of water. It'd be different if it was a box. Yeah. It'll be there if for it was a box, hours. totally yeah. buy it. No. It's well, sitting in a have pillow. These cats would be like your little gatekeep. Maybe the fact that the pool works is because the cat was sitting there. I think that. Well, he Ooh, is the cat his the like cat, secret power? Yeah, I think there is. The power cat's like the, the cats. gatekeeper to the underworld, right? Yeah. Because yeah. power. Yeah, they're the gatekeeper they to the other power underworld. To this day, yeah. I saw Constantine. They they're half in, half out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so getting back to the physiology uh, and, yes, right, and right, the ten yeah, you were make years, a point of yeah. Well, just that in this one, he's uh, he's still a, he's a living mummy. He's yes. still a dried corpse yes. that's been reanimated by the scroll of Thoth, and then he's still walking around pretending to be a modern guy. Yeah. But for so the movie jumps ahead ten years after that that's moment. Why he moves so slow, and. He presents himself as Ardeth Bay, so I'm like, well, you have to have papers, I assume, to back this identity up. You have yeah. to have money because he's renting Egypt. apartments. He's got to yeah. have like some. I'm like, and what? it's a nice apartment. 
He's got yeah. nice clothes. It is pretty nice. Yeah, but, well, yeah. but she says he's rich because he knows where all the shit's buried. That's what I'm saying. He knows oh, where everything's yeah. buried, so, he's selling so he everything can on the sell black everything. Market. Right. Yeah. Shasty yes. motherfucker. Exactly. I got it. But like those first couple of days when you gotta get unwrapped from all that shit and steal clothes. Right. He's off like Dark of, Man uh, wandering around. Yes. He's like, help me. <laughs> <laughs> then I, I assume <laughs> there were several people that he like basically either put under thrall or held at some kind of knife point or something, had something mm. on them that would teach him English. Uh, and the custom of the modern world because he knows like you know who all these people are like right. you're the professor and you're with this english group and this is you know we're not permitted to, to do it. yeah yeah taking his time there's holes all man together. would this be well i, mean, I want the movie to just goes too, like it can just be like bones underneath and just yeah uh, that'd be cool yeah well, the movie explains it by being 10 years in 10 years right. god knows there's like 100 movies of yeah, happened, happened in his storyline yeah. you know to get us there mm. but it's still puzzling puzzling interesting mm. yeah so why did it, did it take him 10 years to to wait for an expedition to come close to where uh Anaxena Moore was buried, like, to point her out? Was he building something up? Like, why do you wait so long for, like, to go find her? Because that's kind of his whole deal. Yeah, because he literally walks in and is like, hey, I'm going to show you where she is. She's right there. Like, it's very (laughs) matter of fact. Why did he have to wait? Why couldn't he do that with someone else? Because people are excavating all over Egypt all the time. Yeah. Why did he have to wait for them? Yeah, I mean, I think that goes to, like, just assuming that it took him that long to get to a position right. where he could approach people, right. you know, and as also a, to gain like social, social yeah. anxiety. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 social anxiety yeah. back in the day. <laughs> He's like, oh, if you touch me, I'm going to fall apart. There's going to be signs in Doctor's office like, don't worry, even the ancient ones. Yeah. <laughs> like those motivational posters. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. And yeah. they show that scene where he's like, don't touch me, I don't like to be touched. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. It's like the, it's like the social anxiety equivalent of the hang in there poster with the cat, yeah. you know? Yes. It's like, oh, it's like don't worry, the mommy didn't like to be touched either. Right, Boris Karloff is going to be my new meme for social anxiety, there and you know. no one's going to get it besides yeah. maybe you three. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be great. And our it. listeners. And our yes, listeners. And our listeners, of course, yeah. because I don't like to be touched. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. it. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, he points out the uh, resting place of Oxenamon. An Oxenamon? An Oxenamon. Whatever. An Oxenamon. And uh, I try and go by the Arnold Vosloo pronunciation of it. <laughs> Oxenamon. Right? Oxenamon. Oxenamon. Okay. Oxenamon. Oxenamon. Ox yeah. and a moon. Uh, she's a real life <laughs> Egyptian moon. princess. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, or something like that. She Did was. Did Imhotep uh, exist? Yes. Okay. But they just appropriated the names. Of course. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. So he, he knows where she because this right. is like his long lost love. We don't know this. This is the way that the movie kind of parcels this information out yes. to us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which uh, may be clever, maybe not. I mean, now, obviously, when we do the remakes, they up front tell you, like, this is who this right. person is. You always is. start in the past and then come mm-hmm. forward. Mm hmm. Yeah, and like what horrible thing that they did. But yeah. the way that this movie unfolds, I guess to 1932 audiences, you wouldn't really know what the hell is going on. There's no. that idea at the beginning, the guys who have excavated the grave say, you know, he must have done something horrible to be buried alive. They know that he's been mummified alive. Yeah. But they we don't actually know what that information is given to us later, which is kind of interesting, I guess, for the type of structure of the movie. Right. How long do you think they would go in this movie before they realize that the character... What is it? Uh, Abbot? Uh, Adith? Abbot? What's his Who name? Ardeth Bay? Ardeth. Ardeth Bay. What? The, the mummy yeah, Abed. alias. Abbot. Uh, yeah. Troy and Abbot in the Ardeth. morning? Yes. <laughs> Troy and Abbot in the morning. <laughs> Sorry. Artith. I forgot where I was going with Some that. Some people will find that funny. Sorry. <laughs> and the community jokes came up. Um... um what the fuck was I going to say? God I'm damn it. sorry. I lost it. Uh, it'll come back. <laughs> yeah, it'll come back to you. All right, you just jump in when it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So he has been in love with this woman for 3,700 years. Yes. Long time. And was trying to bring her back to life uh, back right then. Right after she died. Yeah. Yes. But they caught him, and that's why this was an affront to the gods, because she was like the holy virgin of, I was going to say Set, but probably Amun-Ra. Uh, yeah, or I something. think so, yes. Yeah. And um, so they buried oh, him alive. Uh, how long do you think the the audience viewing this back in the day, how long do you think it took them to realize that uh, Ardith was the mummy? Like, is do you think, is there a point, like, when he first shows up, 
do you think do you think they would have noticed he's the mummy or was there a giveaway point within the movie I don't remember I think I feel like they would have known I think yeah I think they had to have like known right away in. just yeah. because of the casting of Boris, Boris Karloff, Karloff who Frankenstein yeah. had yeah. made him like an overnight okay. name okay and so this is like his next movie right. basically well, I was gonna say, so. what did he do before this was Frankenstein. just Frankenstein uh, pff, I don't, I'm not entirely sure but he did do he did Frankenstein before this you know what his real name is Boris Karloff yeah, it was oh, really. I used to know this. Yeah, I'm sure Fuck. it's been said before. It's William Henry Pratt. He's an Englishman, yeah. but he oh, chose yeah. Boris as a Russian name. Boris Karloff. Oh, I mean, come know. on, that's a, such well, a cooler name. It's a way well, cooler name. name. Pratt in England means something different than yeah, us here, true. so I can it's understand Pratt. wanting to get yeah. rid of that last name. It's like, yeah. I'm Boris. Yeah. 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 Boris Karloff. So I think they knew when he opened the door and he's standing there, it's like, oh, that's the mummy, and now he looks like a human being. Gotcha. Yeah. So... He wants to, he's still on like the crusade to resurrect his lost love, which mm-hmm. this is dedication. Yeah. And he makes sure she knows later on. He mm-hmm. keeps bringing up all he's done for her. Like he does not let her forget this. Well, I like the way that both characters, both him and her, both say like, no man has ever suffered yeah. as much for a woman yeah. as you have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I like the, well, I just like the, I mean, we haven't gotten there yet, but I just like the whole thing how he's like, I did all this while you were dead, mm-hmm. but you owe me now. Right. <laughs> like you had no choice in this, but I did this for you. So fucking you're going to do this for me. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You're mine now. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting <laughs> dynamic. Once, he, Well, he finds, uh, I guess to explain who she is, he finds a woman named Helen Groves, Grosner. 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 It's, it's Grosvenor, but it's Grosvenor. Who's like half English, half Egyptian. And it yes. turns out that she has the soul somehow of Oxenamen and has, throughout history, deleted scenes from this movie, lost to time, had, uh, I oh, think, I in the reflecting say. pool, like her in different eras. Oh, really? Oh, cool. like you can that find sounds awesome. That'd be, yeah, that's nice. cool. Yeah. Yeah. So she kept on being reborn, and finally he meets up with her nice. in 1932. Very nice. I was, that's what I was going to ask. What? How much Is this complete? Like, what is... Is there things missing from this? I noticed there are some uh, edits, or at least, like, there's... Maybe a few frames missing from certain parts of this movie. It's just an old print. That's probably skip. just what what but, survives. But is this the complete old yes. print? Yes. yes. Didn't okay. use, this you is know, what went to theaters. Was okay. he, I don't know if it was Universal or maybe it was Fox. Some studio back in the day had a huge fire and mm-hmm. lost a bunch of yeah. original prints of at, stuff. At a certain point, yeah, who every that? studio has a fire. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. It was in the vault or something. Yeah. Like yeah. they lost it. It was a Universal nitrate. Universal had print. a yeah. fire. Like this was probably uh, seven years ago at this point, maybe. Oh, see, I'm talking. This is like what, like the 50s or 60s. Oh, they had yeah. a huge fire. I think it might have been Fox actually. They had a, they had a huge fire and lost a bunch of stuff Ooh. that was you know irreplaceable mm-hmm. at that point in time. Well, those these scenes that I'm talking about, they, they were cut out before the theatrical mm-hmm. release. Mm-hmm. So, and that's why the only thing you know they would just throw the stuff away if they didn't use it. Yeah, but there are stills that you can find of like her and. Uh, I can't even remember what the era was, you know, if it's Greece or something like, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. But there were supposed to be like several flashes. Can you imagine just throwing stuff like that away and just not? Know? I mean, that's where everybody was back in the day, back in 1932. It's just mm-hmm. like, well, we're not using it. We don't need it. Gone. Yeah. Just stuff lost to time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it's amazing that we still have like movies like uh, Freaks. Yeah. And um Oh, it was the other one. Oh, it was just on the tip of my tongue. I keep thinking one in After Midnight, but that one yeah. was released and got uh, you know lost somehow. Mm-hmm. Like the prints yeah. disappeared. But uh, Bram Stoker's widow sued to have all prints of Nosferatu destroyed. Right, mm-hmm. and so it's a miracle we have that movie because right. the, I think the law ruled in her favor. Yeah, and they mm-hmm. were supposed to round up and destroy all prints of that movie. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Damn. So the fact that you still have it is like you know, that's remarkable. awesome. It's yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. And I think Freaks is the same way. That was sure. made thank in God the 30s, we have that. Yeah. To the sixties, I think. Can you mm-hmm. imagine what was lost? Like, what's gone? Mm-hmm. Things that were made that'll never be seen. Oh, well, especially because, like, this movie and, like, movies before it were pre Hayes Code. Yeah. So, like, like that's the one thing I loved about this movie is, like, the way the women were dressed was, like, not censored at all because it's pre Hayes Code. So, like, yeah. they can wear. That was like, a boob window. Oh, there that was so was much, so much side yeah. boob. And, and like, was, I'm just like oh, yeah, we can yeah. See something going on? Like, yeah, there was, so like, much. I love pre Code Hollywood movies because they don't give a fuck about any of that they stuff. Don't. I'm and just like, damn, this I've, is 1932? Right. Yeah. And I feel like we associate, like, anything earlier than 
than like the 70s being super conservative right, and, like, yeah. and censorship. So like it's really nice to see pre-code stuff. But at the same time, like what bums me out a little bit about this movie is I wish that Theda Barra would have been included in this movie in some way because she was like a early silent film, early talkies actress that like specialized in like cult films that were certainly you know kind of had like a dark history and stuff she was called Mm -hmm. the vamp because she was like almost always nearly naked in her movie she was always a vampire she was always a succubus or something and like to have her and boris karloff on screen together would have been like amazing combination of these two people where was she she stopped acting in 1930 so right before this movie came uh, out i'm not doing these sound movies yeah yeah Yeah, she is from like 1912 to 1930 she did a shit ton of movies and like she did like the first iteration of cleopatra and like which is a really famous picture that's been on the internet she's got like the crazy makeup and like literally her top is just like coiled snakes covering her boobs and that's Mm. it like Mm -hmm. everyone's seen this picture but like it's pre-code so there's no censorship or anything and like like the studio would even have her like do these interviews of being like yeah I'm really into like occult stuff and Ouija boards and all this stuff and like just to perpetuate the movies and I love that era of film before all that was censored and it was really manufactured and so like to see her and Boris Karloff or even anyone from this Universal Monsters Mm -hmm. like on screen together would have been great but they just never overlapped unfortunately yeah Yeah, there was like a like an uptick in the like in the occult Mm -hmm. back in like the 20s like a huge uptick yeah crystal balls and you know Ouija boards (laughs) and and section yeah yeah Yeah. and she was like the big perpetuator of that definitely so it's a shame that like she never got to overlap with this other part of that culture yeah how old was she at the time like that she retired Mm -hmm. or quit yeah maybe 30s or 40s at the most oh damn young yeah but i mean but i mean once the code hit that put a kibosh on a lot of people's careers unfortunately so you know they were basically blacklisted at that point so repeat her name again for the theta theta barra there you go. Yeah, if and um, there's a another great podcast out there called You Must Remember This that covers the yeah, history of old Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. They did a really great episode on her nice. mm. that details a lot of her history and her career. Well, in the the plot of the Mummy, then the um, you know Boris Karloff's so obviously his goal is then trying to. Well, he's trying to resurrect. It's weird. He has the the mummy of an oxenomen, but he's right. going to set it on fire and kill. Uh, Helen, mm-hmm. and somehow by going through death, he's then he's going to bring her back to life and make her a living mummy like himself, mm-hmm. uh, because she has the soul of his long lost love. Um, but what makes that dynamic kind of interesting is like you know once she and I think this goes to you know what Holly was saying you know how um, she was she was dying you know yeah uh, he's <laughs> yes. I think he explained the this being sapped from her. It was somehow he said, now this is, you know, we're going off of what he says. He must know, he knows the magic, right? Yeah. He has the glowing eyes. He can do the yeah. thrall and all that stuff. But he said that somehow the fact that her heart was falling in love with this other dude, the Englishman, whose name now I can't Frank. remember. Frank. Frank. Whipple, right? Frank Wemple. 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 W-H-E-M-P-L-E. Wemple. 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 There was only like eight people in this movie. The credits was really short, so... <laughs> I remember his name in the cast. Frank. Uh, because her heart is falling in love with him, it is drawing her soul. It's splitting her soul in two mm-hmm. different ways, and that's what's killing her. He says, like, uh, you have to come to me to actually live because the more you go to him, you're going to die. Because now that he's – now that Imhotep's been introduced into her life again, and she's – the memories of Egypt are reawakening in her past life. All about past lives. All yeah. about best Boom. lives. Meanwhile, this is the easiest paycheck this actress has ever earned for being, you know, because she lays down on a couch yeah, for being horizontal, laying, for laying the down on fainting movie. couches, yes. like oh, fancy oh, reclining oh. couches. Yeah, fainting couches. Yeah, yes. they're definitely like, like what? My so, husband's oh. been murdered. Faint on oh, couch. Yeah, that negligee. <laughs> yeah, the one. You know, yeah. I should wear it. <laughs> yeah, she had to stand up. Frank, <laughs> she had to stand up for a whole three minutes of this movie. Yeah. but didn't take one step in either direction. Just stood in that. Oh, same she got spot. to walk the dog. Yeah, she walked the dog. Yeah, the thing is like sit down on this. The bed. dog that did not want to go with her. No. no. I did dog, appreciate Sean your better. attempt at the continental accent there. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I try. Yeah. So, but. She it turns out that she doesn't actually like once she becomes and remembers that she's an ox and almond, she doesn't want to have like any part of this. Yeah, she doesn't want anything to do with him. She's just like, no, I can't because he like he desecrated some shit. 
Like when in doing what he was doing. And she doesn't want any part of that. She's like, I'll be damned if I do this. So she doesn't want anything to do with it. She doesn't want to become part of his, you know, the evil rituals that he's had to do to like bring her back or try to bring her back at that point. Do you think that's what it was? I mean, maybe because that's an interesting idea. Because she, she died and didn't know that he went to like, well, I guess it's Egyptian black magic. Basically. Yeah. You know, afterwards. Yeah, he busted out like he, he moved like stones and stuff and like. That was sacred. Curious. And yeah. she was like, you know, so you think that's part of the why she's like, you, you know, it's like, I can't be with you. Yeah, <laughs> You've I, like done yeah, all this. No, like, I, but I, I think that's what's, what yeah. it is. Like they loved each other. But after she died, all the things that he did to get her back. It's just things that she can't, you know, unholy. reconcile. They're exactly. unholy. And I feel everything. like if this was, if there was like a modern translation of, of this and, and modern dialogue, it would have been like, "Do you know what I did for you when you were dead?" And she'd be like, "Fuck you on about what'd you do? No, yeah, yeah. Well, no. Not like she's not. She doesn't want to be a part of that. And that's no, I think, yeah. the big reason why she like fends him off at that because it's just like, no, I'll be damned. And at this point. See, that's interesting because I, I don't think I've ever thought of it that way before. No. I've always interpreted well, it's probably that might be right. I mean, I don't know. The I've always interpreted it as you know, it's like once he's says, you know, well, I have to kill you, you know, you only she have to be, also, you only have to be dead for a that. minute, that right? You know, and she's too. like, what? Fuck that. That. I'm alive and I'm young and I'm living right now yeah. and yeah. I know who I am, yeah. you know, at long last. It's like, I don't want to die yeah. and I don't want to be with like you, you're yeah. this dead thing, right? Yeah. I, think, I think that is definitely a part of it, but there's also the part where she like turns around and starts talking to like her god mm-hmm. uh, in the statue form. She's like, please, no, he's evil and uh, grant me the, the power to, oh, uh, that's the moment, right? Yeah. And I think that's the moment. She, there's a moment where she says something like, "Like I know I've sinned, but you know, yeah. this me is like <laughs> this is some shit, God. <laughs> she's, like yeah. we can't. She's like, I ain't I, into this. I fucked up, but come on, like, like no, no, I didn't come back yeah. to this. Yeah, I think that's kind of her what she's thinking. She's like, no, I'm sorry, can't do it. Did, so you, what, oh, did okay. you guys like that necrophilia joke she made like early on in the movie when she was like, "Do you have to dig up dead girls to fall, yeah. find girls to fall in love with?" Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's like, wait, what? I was she, like, she, I was like, oh, no. whoa, snap! Like, <laughs> didn't know, burn. didn't know this turned into a yo mama contest <laughs> all of a sudden. Oh, like, <laughs> it was like the creepiest pickup line in the world. It's yeah, like, who do you remind me of? I think I've met you before. Yeah, you know, like, I dug up this grave and, and you know your head. And, oh my god, that which is a great cut. I don't. Yeah, it's a. I, I always wonder, I'm like, did they lose a scene? Like, yeah, was the film yeah. not good from that point? Because that yeah. a, that's a great comedy cut, but Your I don't know if they were cut. just... Right! What? Yeah. What is that cut? Like, yeah. I can't... I, I always wonder if, like, did they have the presence of mind to do that? Did they lose a bit of film in yeah. order to just, like, well, we have to cut here and it just work like, out? how is like, there not more to that sentence? Well, like, like yeah. exactly. You're the creepiest man ever. <laughs> the fact that she had to combat his advances with, like, do you have to dig up dead bodies to find girls you're in love with? You're go- Guys, if you ever hit on a girl and she says that to you, you're going in the wrong direction. Yeah. Like, or if you, you dig know, up dead bodies yeah. to find love, you're yeah. also going in the wrong yep, direction. Yep, that whole scene was uncomfortable. He's yep. very, Frank is a very creepy man. Yeah, Frank is so, a very creepy like, man. He was very Bobby uncomfortably Earl. close to her during that whole scene, too. Like, they were smelling each other's breath during that yeah, scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, everybody's just like when they're, you know, even Boris Karloff. There's no like, personal space no, in this not movie. At all in this movie. Not at all. The whole movie is like walking in on like, uncomfortable moments. Yeah, like the, whole movie. <laughs> the whole movie. <laughs> and they let it happen, too. Yeah, they do. Like, the characters yeah. surrounding them are just like, I, yeah, I know. I, Let's on. just watch this Let's for a moment see and happens. see what happens. Yeah, yeah. Mm, he's molesting her. That's weird, right? No, yeah. oh, mm-hmm. literally, the doctor and the other dude walk in and they're just staring at each other, and no one says a goddamn word. Mm-hmm. This it's is normal so crazy. Well, because they know that something. It the 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 quickness that they get on the idea that yes. like this guy Very is, quick. you know, the mummy. Because what do they have? They have uh, mummy was dug up. The mummy disappeared. The guy who was in the room with it went crazy. Yeah. yeah. So the rational mind says, "Well, somebody came in and stole it. it. The fucking thing didn't get up and walk away." Except Edward Van Sloan's character. He also played Van Helsing in Dracula. Oh, nice. So oh, yeah. he's got the you know the supernatural. He's like, well, you know, at the beginning, he's like, "Don't open that box." Yes. You know, this has a curse on it, and yes. they're real. I will not be a part human of this. nature. Don't open that. Someone's going to open it. Yeah. yeah. I want yeah. to know what's in it. Don't open the box. I'm going to open the box. I'm pushing the big red button. <laughs> yeah. But I get that he's like, you know, like, well, you know, somebody, you open the box. I told you not to open the box. There's a there's a mummy. Probably probably the guy got up and actually walked away. <laughs> yeah. And if that logic maintains itself, yeah. then the reason, like the mummy and the scroll disappeared on that night 10 years ago. And yeah. the scroll has shown up in the, you know, in the, uh, the museum. 
Yeah. And someone was murdered. And then Ardeth Bay is like, that's my scroll. I mean, I mean then this is the right. guy. This is the mummy. So right. he's like on it right then. But why is the Basic other guy deduction. like so? <laughs> right. I think, yeah. I think that's why I'd be like, mm, shall we depart here? Yeah. Shall? <laughs> Things seem to be amiss here. Yeah. We shall go. Like, I miss England. Yes. <laughs> Don't right? all. It's Let's rather go dry. Back. Yes. At go some point, England. you got to go yes, like. We should. It's too yeah. sunny and dry here. Yes. Let's go oh, back to England. They don't have tea here. Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> Were you guys bothered by the way people manhandled the shit out of scrolls oh, in this movie? God, Holy like, shit. Worst archaeologists mm-hmm. in a long time. Was, like, yeah, because it, now we look at it's it. It's like, use it's the just, gloves for God's sake. But they're just like crinkling that paper. They were handling like when they were opening the the chest at the beginning of the Oh, oh God! Just, just like, oh, like open it. He has like a paint scraper, just like trying it just open. Just like throw like, that shit open. Like, before, yeah. before he always like, hmm, the unbroken seals of a thousand years. Okay, <laughs> crack it open. <laughs> like, oh, How Jesus. else do you, you open have no thing. respect for this shit? <laughs> and then let me crumple up this paper in my hand. Know. But it's just like they don't oh, take God. any time to like. Just observe it and be in reverence of it. They're just like, hmm, these seals have been here. Get the crowbar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck can we break it open with? Yeah. Ah! Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. They're very quick to just open shit. So many people like grabbing scrolls way too hard. Yeah. Like, wait, now, not only are the oil of their hands already destroying the paper, yeah, but, but they're just like, they're old. just cram- crumpling them up in their hand. Yeah. Like it's, you know, a fucking yeah. spitball in high people school. People don't even <laughs> touch the Constitution like no. this. And this is like uh-huh. thousands of years. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, okay, be careful. Yeah. Jesus. This yeah. one's like folding it, put it in the back pocket. It's like, we'll need this later. <laughs> but on the flip side, no reverence. There is like a, uh, or at least I thought, maybe I don't know, you have to tell me if this came through for you guys, but it seemed like they were throwing out a lot of what sounded like either wholly made up or heavily researched little bits about like ancient Egyptian burial rites and like the way that the deities interacted and all this stuff. And I'm like, like what? Well, I don't have any specifics, but it was at, I know toward the end, there was something that Boris Karloff said to Zita <laughs> Johan that was like, where in the fuck did you get like, that is like, you know, some book reading right there <laughs> to get that information. I can't yeah. think of the example, God damn it. but there were several of them throughout the movie where it was like, they know something about like ancient Egypt yeah. more so than, it seemed like, you know, like, you know, I just saw the Tom Cruise one, which, you know, it's like. This is, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Do they have any idea of ancient Egypt? No, like, it's just, there there's any? pyramids and there was a woman who killed her, you know. Okay. With shit written all over her face, you know. Yeah. She got well, that, hieroglyphics on her face. Where that comes Double from? eyes, no, okay. yeah. I don't care. You can. No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't I care what bullshit the, they made up the about it. Audience, yeah. We can talk about that off mic later. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I just got that impression that it was like, you know. They knew something. I mean, about- they mentioned things like ISIS, which I mean, has some. I'm sure has. No, some- it was more specific than that, but no. Right, this- but I'm just saying, if they know that, I'm sure they did a little book reading to get into some of this stuff, get some but information. Now that we're talking about this, and this actually did just occur to me right now. This is right not now, a planned thing. On Mike, folks, it yep. just occurred to him. Uh, the guy who wrote this movie is John L. Balderston. John L. Balderston wrote original. The, you know, he was the guy who brought um, Dracula, the play. Uh, to I'm sorry, America. There was a Dracula play. <clears throat> oh yeah, I did not know. That. There was a Dracula. Uh, have you play. seen the original Dracula? Because it's almost shot for shot the same yeah. as the play. It's, That's I, why yeah, it feels uh, like a stage play. Bella when you watch Lugosi it. was in the play. Yeah, Bella yeah. Lugosi and they was brought in the play him. And they brought him yep. to the movie. Oh, yeah. the movie. Okay, it played on. And the Broadway movie is like a play recorded, mm-hmm. basically. Interesting. So John Balderston, I think he co-wrote the play. He wrote one of the versions. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if he wrote the American version or the English version. I think Ronald Dean was the other guy. But anyway. So John Balderston writes the play, I believe, or for Dracula. And I think he wrote the screenplay. So, of course, then it follows that if you wrote that movie, you should write this movie also. Okay. Which is why this movie feels a lot like Dracula. It's a drawing room mystery and with a foreign guy who's over. got like a woman under thrall and the guys who are trying to figure out how to fight him. But John Balderston, turns out, was a journalist who covered Tutankhamun's too. No, really? Shut the oh, up. shit. Yeah, he was there when it was actually going on. He was wow. writing the dispatches for one of the nice. newspapers. So that's, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, that that's sense. why, because this guy was like steeped in the, you yeah. know, like, in oh, Egyptian lore. Movie. Yeah. Nice. Hey, man, write, yeah. what you, write what you know. Write what you know, Even man. Then, write what you know. Yeah. Yeah. And he knew the mummy. We got to find out if it's true that uh, there was some 
there's a story about a mummy. Ah, shit. I wish I had looked this up beforehand. But there was some mummy that was dug up and put on an ocean liner. And that ocean liner hit an iceberg and sunk. Uh It was called the Titanic. And yeah, this is probably one of those creepypastas or something like that. I'm going to look this up. This seems a little Listener, you write in and tell us if you know what the hell this story is. But I remember hearing it at one point. I don't know if it's total bullshit. Where's that movie? The Sunken Mummy? Well, no, it was the the Mummy's mummy's Curse Sunk the Titanic. The Uh, Titanic sunk because of a Mummy's Curse. So there was a I just want to see a modern day movie with a bunch of middle aged white people on a cruise ship that gets sunk by by a mummy on board. Like. Where's that movie? movie like, like I want the Titanic Sci-Fi recut. Channel. Sci-Fi Channel. Get on this shit. Yeah, you know. Where's this Titanic mummy? The movie. Titanic mummy. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm besides on board. wanting that, what do you want from the dark universe, Michaela? <sighs> we should probably save that for wrap ups. Well, I know. I think that's a discussion we can have <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah. I think like the, the Universal has decided to take properties that they own and have for many years and decide to actually make a connected universe out of them again. We're getting the mummy. Like, what? I mean, what are our other options? What if if we're if we were to invest in this uh, in this uh, uh, franchise, as it were, and like decide what we want to come forward? Because we do that with Marvel. It, we look at the properties right. they own, and like, well, I want to see this. I want to see Black Panther. That, I want to see all this stuff. That leads into a question I had for you guys. Okay. So, like, if you have your Mount Rushmore of Universal monsters, right? You can okay. only you can only pick four. What are your four? Uh, Jason, start with Colin? Michael Myers. Uh, <laughs> no, oh, I'm sorry. no, Universal. Wrong ones. Wrong ones. I'm sorry. Uh, what do you think, Colin? Who's your Who's it's... your four that can only go on your Mount Aren't Rushmore? Only four? No, there's it's... like no. That's what I'm saying. You have Mount Rushmore. You can only okay. pick four. Yeah, okay. It's Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman, and the Mummy. Okay, Colin. What are yours? Or Sean? Sean? <laughs> Sean? <laughs> Colin already went. Uh, all right. If we got to go with Universal, yeah. Um, Just Universal like, Monsters. What's your Mount yeah. Rushmore? Ah, okay. Uh, thanks a lot for your confidence, <laughs> Colin. Hey, I may yeah. not have seen a bunch of them, but I know them, okay? Yeah. Did you know the Phantom of the Opera was theirs? Mm-hmm. Okay, I didn't know that. Should okay. I? Did you know that uh, yes, got the Hunchback Jek- of Notre Dame? That I knew. Jekyll. Yeah. See, that's what Don't I'm think too much. Think Just go with your gut. Is, is, Jekyll is, Universal movie? Because yeah, they were yeah. like MGM. Jekyll and Hyde is Universal. You yeah. sure? I'm pretty sure. There's like Frederick March and there's Spencer Tracy. Some of those were MGMs, but I'm not sure. The Invisible Man sure. is uh, yeah, Universal. Universal. Yes, right, yes, so it is. I pick, creature. I pick, you only got four. Creature all right, man. I pick uh, Invisible Man. Mm-hmm. I pick, um, what was the one we were talking about before the Invisible Man? Creature? The, uh, no. Uh, Hunchback. Dracula. Hunchback. The Wolfman. Bride. Nope. The Bride, <laughs> Frankenstein. <laughs> That's all. We just went through all of them. That's one we didn't know what Hunchback. That was Universal. Jekyll. Phantom. Oh, Jekyll, yeah. yeah. Uh, Invisible Man. Jekyll and Hyde. <sighs> Frankenstein. Mummy. That's it. All right, Holly. What are your four Mount Rushmore Universal? Um, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, and Creature from Black Lagoon. Damn it, I don't get Wolfman. Fuck. It's only four? <laughs> it's only four. It's your Mount Rushmore. It's your Mount Rushmore. All right. Wolfman, Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein. Nice. Yeah. And then, oh, God. Probably Creature. Yeah. Yeah. See, I haven't seen yeah. a lot of Creature. I don't think Dracula would be in my, my Mount Rushmore. There's yeah. There's Creature from the Black Lagoon. Uh, Revenge of the... Uh, is it Revenge of the last one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the middle one. Oh, shit. I'm blanking out. Don't I remember. should know this. It's not Return to the Black Lagoon. <laughs> that's Return to the Blue Lagoon. I was going to say, that's Return yeah. to the oh Blue Lagoon. Blue Lagoon and Return to the Blue Lagoon. I got it. Creature from Blue the Black Lagoon, Lagoon uh, Revenge of the Creature, and the Creature Walks Among yeah. Us. There it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There, right, there you go. Yep. Yeah. I just want... There, didn't you make us watch a 3D one? That was Creature from the Black Lagoon. Yes. Yeah. Although uh, Revenge of the Creature was also in 3D, but not <laughs> yeah. available on like video in yeah. 3D yet. Mm-hmm. The creature in 3D you should watch, and you should listen to our Saturday Night Freak Show episode where we watched it in 3D and then talked about it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right, so does that bring us to the end of our mummy discussion? Do before we, have any we other uh, questions about the mummy? I mean, there's probably endless questions about the mummy, <laughs> but... So you know the one that... It's, endle- it's literally an endless franchise. <laughs> It's it a started series, before we were born. It, it just keeps gonna keep, unraveling. It's keep going until keeps un- unraveling. Take your, take your mic away. Take it away. <laughs> <laughs> done. <laughs> done. <laughs>
But it's going to keep going. It's probably going to keep going until we die. But until after we're dead. Well, yeah. It's In like some anything. version or it another. Was there, like, right. It was there like before it, it's, us. It's, it'll be there it's after a series, us. Like, it's, yeah. it's almost like the, the basic elements of movie making, if you were. And and some of those elements are, you know, the mummy, Frankenstein. It's like it almost feels like they've been up? around. No, no, it yeah, feels, yeah, it's my rep. no. It almost feels like they've been around forever. So, like, I mean, they'll continue until we die. Mm. That's true. Mm-hmm. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to answer some viewer mail, and then we're going to come mail. back, and we are going to have our wrap ups, okay. our final reviews of the movie. You're going to find out what everybody here thought about the mummy. Should you watch it or not? But first of all, we're going to summon Igor. Igor, where are you, sir? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Thanks, Igor. Igor bears a striking resemblance to some of the universal monsters. Somebody, his skin is a little dry. It's you know? a little dry. It's he could probably use some lotion. He's like, he's like a mummy. He has Frankenstein. a condition. Okay. If anyone wants condition. to donate some gold bond lotion, you know, to the freak <laughs> show, we will take it. Need it. Uh, we should make a, the, our own movie. A GoFundMe. But well, you figure Igor comes from the universe. I think so. Franchise. Like he's like yeah. a distant yeah. cousin of someone. He's yeah. just like he never mm-hmm. got his uh, day in the sun. Yeah. Wait, so. you want a little bit of trivia? Oh shit! So Igor is generally thought of as the assistant to Doctor Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's not true. That's, that's that's not our Igor, is it? Like, did you know well, no, Frankenstein Igor? Igor? <laughs> Igor in Frankenstein, or the, that character in Frankenstein is named Fritz. Fritz? Oh. In the original. Yeah. In the original. It's yeah. Fritz, yep. Ah, Fritz. Igor comes in a couple mm-hmm. of movies later. Maybe oh. the second one. I don't know. Right. Is that the one Bella the Lugosi? Is he Third Igor? one. He's Igor with a broken yeah, neck. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bella Lugosi, yep. Yeah. About the mummy, Drew Scott writes in. Wait. Hello, Drew. He wrote in on Facebook. How do you find us on? Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Maybe he wrote in on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. And we know he didn't write in on Instagram, Instagram but he we're can. New. We're at Saturday Night Freak Show on Instagram. Uh, but Drew Scott writes in and says, The original mummy is what I grew up with and what first introduced me to the series. But 1999's The Mummy is the pinnacle. He asks, what are our thoughts? But uh, it's probably our wrap-ups. Wrap-ups, yeah. We'll save it for wrap-ups. All right, stick around, Drew. We will get to that. Uh, about our episode, last week's episode, Breaking, Dom Cree writes in. Dom. He hey, says, Dom. the awesomeness of this episode can be summarized this way. <laughs> Sweeping brush. Love rhombus. Sweeping you did brush. forget broom. Yeah. I guess. Sweeping <laughs> brush was a I'm great. Like, you forgot broom. broom. Yeah. What well, yeah. happens tonight? I was pretty on point. Yeah. Uh, love rhombus. Uh, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Horowitz. Yeah. I don't remember yep. what the Mr. Horowitz. No, was. that was in it my wrap up. Like the reason why I made you guys watch this movie is because I had a teacher in high school that was like, oh, we had to write, yeah, yeah. we had to write movie right. reviews, and oh, he was right. tired of people. Oh, yeah. 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 Right. yeah. Also says Colin's definition of crunk dancing. Yeah. Any. Colin's very white. And yeah. the, uh, the yeah. MVP goes to a three-way tie of Colin, Popcorn Shrimp, and Mr. Horror. <laughs> yeah. Pop- I remember Popcorn call it Shrimp. Popcorn Shrimp. Popcorn Shrimp. We, Boogaloo we shrimp. Popcorn shrimp. That. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was a fun episode. And about our uh, the previous, previous episode, Deep Blue Sea, mm. Drew Scott writes in again and says, LL Cool J turning into a shark in the video for mm. Deepest Blue, a shark spin, <laughs> yeah. uh, made me think of the covers of those Animorph books. Yeah, it oh, totally oh, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think the Animorph books or might be done sharks. a little bit better than, than <laughs> <What>? that video. <laughs> <laughs> the transition is smoother. Animorphs. You know? Yeah, or street sharks. Or street sharks. Who street have an aversion to pizza. Yeah, street sharks. They do not eat pizza. Mm-hmm. Street sharks. I don't even yeah. know what the hell it's you're talking about. Street sharks. It's a toy. Street, street sharks was a knockoff a of Ninja Turtles. Yes. Yeah. But they had sharks. an aversion to pizza. I, they yeah. did not like pizza. That was their thing. Like they Which were, is why no one related to Yeah, exactly. That's right. Exactly. They're clearly <laughs> not the Ninja Turtles. I'm sorry. You don't like pizza? Like, like they they had a pointed, like, we don't like pizza in the show. Like, yeah. They were anti-Ninja Turtles. How to relate to kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. like fuck pizza. pizza is like yeah. number one. That's number one. Yeah. 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 And they can't like lasagna because yeah. that's, uh, that's Garfield. Garfield. That's Garfield. Yeah. Garfield. Spaghetti. 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 Nobody likes no. spaghetti. Or manicotti. Manicotti. Big Big Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. I got them all. Oh my god. Oh, love it. That was great. I'm glad somebody else knew what I was talking about. Thank you. 
You're not on an island by yourself. Oh, thank God. So we're going to go around the table and give our final reviews of The Mummy, starting with... Sean! Thank you, Holly. <laughs> Nephew. <Definitely. laughs> Uh, the Mummy, 1932. Um, I really like this movie. I really like watching it tonight. And this um, was your first time. This is my first time. This might be my, aside from like the 1999 Brendan Fraser stuff, this is my first like actual mummy like experience? hardcore mummy movie. Wow. Like going back to the original um, Universal Monsters. Um, I really enjoyed it. I liked what they did. We discussed earlier what they did with the mummy. Um, again, you don't see, you see a little bit of bandaged mummy Boris Karloff earlier on in the movie, but you don't see like him moving around and going about and everything. I like what they did with that stuff in the beginning. It's very, um, it, it feels, I don't want to, I guess, scary to me. It's just like, just keeping it, anytime you can keep your monster off screen and let kind of your imagination go with it, I'm all for that. Mm-hmm. And um, I think they knew that back in the day and they used it very well. So I appreciate that. Um, I like this movie. It was very good. Um, it was only like an hour and 13 minutes with, uh, you know, also very good. I like a nice <laughs> short movie. Again, I appreciate a movie that just, you know, cuts to it. When they got to the end of the movie, the mummy's dead. She wakes up. Credits. Yeah. Done. <laughs> Done. Out. We're good. In I'm just like, out. you know what? I appreciate you. You're not dragging it out. You know and end your movie. Um I like the cinematography of this. I do have a, I have an affinity for the old, kind of the old fashioned cinematography. I don't watch enough of these old movies. I enjoy them whenever I watch them, but I like, I myself never go back and like revisit them. I kind of count on Colin to put that in front of me and, you know, educate me on that. So I appreciate that. Um, but I, I, you know, I had a good time with this. I like Boris Koloff is good. Everybody's good in this. And, you know, even if they're, uh, their character is to be a very, uh, creepy, very, um, uh, just a creepy, you know, the male character in this movie. Just, <laughs> I was going to say that, but, you know, it was a. It was Invading a that personal space. Yeah, it was a different time back then. I yeah. can't call them yeah, rapey. She just, was in love with the guy. Right. So that yeah. was like, a mutual thing. That was a thing. mutual thing. It's I like, mean, I can't blame anyone for that one. This is courtship in the back of exactly, the day. Exactly, you know? yes. Um, but I like, I like what they did with this. I like the, you know, uh, Character design, I like what they did with Boris Karloff as, you know, the mummy 10 years later. I had, I enjoyed this movie and I was, uh, I was, um, I was in it from the beginning to the end. So I definitely recommend the mummy. Um, I, what were we saving for this? The, our, our particular thoughts on the 1999 yeah, revival? Yeah. Um, yeah. Versus this one. Yeah. Versus, I mean, I, I, but I, you like the Brendan Fraser ones for all different reasons. Like I like that they, they're so they're, different. They're mm-hmm. so different, obviously, because mm-hmm. there's so much time in between them. I like that they are referencing the original mummy movie that we watched tonight. It's very good. Yeah. Um, the 1999 ones are like great to me. I love mm-hmm. the first two, the mummy and the mummy returns. I mm-hmm. haven't seen the tomb of the dragon emperor. I think is what it was. Uh, I the don't Scorpion, want- King? Scorpion King? Scorpion King. One, two, three, I four, also have five. not seen the Scorpion King. I don't want to. Just based on the CGI of the Mummy Returns Scorpion King. <laughs> which we can- yeah, but he's just the rock. But this the, the rock. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Scorpion King. But I just- Before the rock was box office gold. Basically, yeah. yes. And I'm just like, eh, I don't need to see that. But the, the Mummy and the Mummy Returns, I think, are like- uh, uh, That is, that is, I think, peak like summer- Blockbuster popcorn adventure. Like I, Definitely. I also think it has some substance to it. It's not just dumb, mindless stuff. Like there's some good stuff going on in there. I appreciate them for that. Oh, it, it's not just dumb. Mindless I just stuff. watched it. Did you? <laughs> All right, this I week. All right, I haven't seen it in a little bit, but even if it is dumb and mindless, it's still very. It's uh, still very entertaining, um, but the original Mummy I enjoyed a lot tonight. So I definitely recommend you go back and watch it, The Mummy. I recommend. Yeah. Um, yeah, I I enjoyed this movie a great deal. I've seen it a few times. Um, first time I saw it was on an old reel, which was amazing. It was... You're saying a film reel. An old film reel, yeah. It, freaking amazing. I had the opportunity to... I have a friend that collects old film, and um, it. I, I wish everyone could see it that way. You really feel like you're stepping back in time. Um, so I think that initial viewing kind of set it in my heart that I was going to like this movie. Um, it, wow. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I've seen it a few times. I own it. Uh, I have the universal um, box set that Colin has. Um, I think there's there's something really great about these old universal movies. It's almost like um, it's almost like looking at old photos like of your grandparents. Like there's just something really reverent about it. You it's hard it's hard to look at movies like this and try to pick them apart in comparison to what 
movies are now because you're just like it's yeah that's a big gap it's it's like it's well it's the birth of film like this is early film it's it, seriously it's like looking at your grandparents wedding photos and being like grandma your dress was ugly like right you can't, exactly. you can't, you can't do, do that, that. Yeah. you can't yeah, do that it's not it's yeah. not what's not it's what it's not it is. a it's, yeah legitimate exactly. critique of that exactly. it's just like you, exactly. no you can't um so i i love i love this movie i it just it just takes you back to that that time when film was more pure than it is now and it's just i don't know i love it. i love old movies though so I feel that way about a lot of old movies, but I, I like this one because I don't I don't lose interest. I, yeah, I, I didn't. I stay with it the whole movie, which with old movies that's not always the case. It does lose you, and some True. things do not translate at all in the generation gap. Um, but this one, I stayed with it the whole time, even after seeing it multiple times. I still like the story. I think it's great. Um, I like Boris Karloff, and everyone did a great job in this, and even the dialogue. It, it's not so. It, it's not so dated. Like it, it is dated, but it's it's still it still works for me. I like her. I like the the. Um, I don't know her name. Helen. She's got a good look to her. Zita <laughs> Z- Johan. She looks like a yeah. cat. <clears throat> yeah. She yeah. does yeah. look like a cat. Like I lo- I love her exchanges with Frank. Like she's just kind of snarky, and I love that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I I think this is a really great um, monster movie to to go back and watch the mummy doesn't obviously it's not in my top my Rushmore like Michaela pointed out that's just the mummy itself it's not necessarily this movie it's it's the the image of the mummy is not necessarily in my Rushmore but I think this movie is a really great old film to revisit and I think everyone should watch all of these movies at some point but I yeah I can't not recommend this um yeah, it's great. And as far as the 1999 Mummy, I haven't seen it since 1999. I saw it when it came out, and I was like 14. Oh, damn. <laughs> so, you haven't watched it since then? I haven't watched it since then. So back then, I was like, yeah, Brendan I Fraser. I mean, <laughs> we it? all love Brendan Fraser. I know. Yeah. I was like, yeah, Brendan yeah. Fraser, he's great. And I loved it. But George of the Jungle and whatnot. I mean, you know. And the best episodes of Scrubs. <laughs> That's I true. Seen Scrubs. That's true. Oh, he, was, he will make you cry in Scrubs. <laughs> he was Perry's brother in law, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But oh, he I did is cry. The, he, I did cry. Yeah, he's oh, got the motion emotional beats and scrubs of any oh, character. He's great. Like, Shit. yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, George of the Jungle as well, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was fourteen when I saw the Mummy, and you know, I, I had questionable opinions back then, so I have no idea what I think of the 1999 Mummy. Uh, but this one, I definitely recommend. So yeah, watch the Mummy, Kayla. All right. So I uh, I love Universal Monsters. I think that all of them are essential viewing for anyone that wants to know anything about film ever. I think you kind of have to start there. And even if you don't enjoy it, trudge your way through it just because it's important to know. But uh, I promised I would tell the story in wrap ups. So when the Benicio Del Toro Wolfman came out in 2010, I remember it came out like Valentine's Day weekend. Because I remember the guy I was dating at the time was like, what do you want to do? I, Colin's heard the story before. But like, he was like, what do you want to do for Valentine's Day? I was like, I want to go see the Wolfman, but I want to go to like a nice theater with like the reserved reclining seats where they bring you food at your, you know, your seat. Hell and like, yeah. You know, like really yeah. do it up because it's like, it's like they're rebooting the Universal Monsters universe. I really want to like do it big and pay some good money into this. And like. Maybe the guy I was dating at the time didn't really know me that well, but he didn't take it seriously at all. Uh, he didn't buy tickets. He didn't reserve seats. He didn't do any of that. Uh, so then when the day came around, I was like, so what are we doing tonight? And he was like, oh, you were serious about that? And I was like, uh, yeah, I was real fucking serious about that. And then so we ended up going, but we ended up going to like our local theater that didn't have, like, is just a very standard theater and didn't have anything reserved. And we went and we were like the only people in the theater. And I was really pissed because I was like, I told you this was what I wanted and you didn't take it seriously. Oh, I, I want my fucking yeah, recliner, exactly. dude. I was like, yeah. I was like, you thought I was joking, apparently. So I broke up with him not too long after that because I was like, this guy does not take what I consider important seriously. Um, this is so important. Michaela broke up with <laughs> yeah, exactly. Monster. Because they <laughs> fucked up our date to see the Wolfman. Yeah, so That's legit, man. Hey, know what you want and yeah. go for it. If you don't get it, yeah, chuck them. Exactly. Yeah. So I, uh, I have a relatively high standard for these movies because of that. Like, I just want them to succeed, and I want like monster movies have not been a thing for a long time, and I really yeah. want them to come back in a really strong way. So I hold yeah. them to a really high standard. You know, um, I think that. 
the Universal Monster movies, though, are mandatory viewing for anyone that wants to know anything about cinema. I don't think you can Absolutely. start anywhere else than here. And The Mummy is like, it's not in my Mount Rushmore of Universal Monsters. It isn't the best, but it's still mandatory viewing because mm-hmm. it, you just have to build up that research and that, like, that inventory of where things started from. It's got some good things about it, but it is definitely a slow burn and is not, like, probably what is classically considered a horror movie because there's not a lot of horror elements to it. But it's still necessary viewing just to know where things started from. Mm-hmm. And like I said earlier, I really wish that Theta Barra and other, like, actors from that really occult period of film could have brought, been brought into this. But this was right before the Haze Coast was started. So, like, things were already starting to be censored a lot. Um, so I get why it didn't happen. But I think it's definitely necessary viewing. Um, it might be a little bit of a chore, but you might look back on it differently after you watch it. So I would definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, man, there's uh, a lot to, I guess, unpack on on these movies. You know, I mean, it's like they are, they're, you know, these monsters are classic. They do seem like they've existed forever, even though it's like, you know, I mean, Dracula comes from folklore and then it was codified by Bram Stoker. Then it was made into a movie and that movie defined with the Hollywood vampire, Mm. you know, well, I was going to say to this day, but basically Uh. Fright Night put the. Yeah, and nail in the coffin the and that one. Yeah, a stake in the heart. Put the stake in the heart of that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it really did. And then Frankenstein had obviously been a novel for 200 years before Hollywood got around to it. And, uh, but when you look at like The Mummy, I always just thought when I was a kid that like, you know, they were just making these books, right, into movies. Mm. But there is no uh, mummy book. I mean, I guess there's, you know, yeah. there's several stories about mummies maybe, or sure. You know, there's the Bram Stoker, from- the jewel from seven stars and all right. that, but there's nothing that kind of, um, you know, it's not like the, a frame of reference. It's yeah. Just a, the reincarnation yeah. of an Egyptian deity in right. the modern day and, or, and, uh, um, Rice, thank you, Jesus yep. Christ! Yeah, there's the <laughs> yeah. broom thing happening. Oh, he's losing all yeah. the words tonight. Anne Rice wrote a mummy book at some point. Oh, it's called the Mummy. Yeah, and oh, I, didn't know I think that. works into her um, in the universe. Yeah, it's like the what do they call the Vampire Sisters or whatever the uh, the Witching Hour. They're, uh-huh. Well, they're witches. Sorry, not the vampires, but okay. the, um, so. It just seems like they've been doing these things for so long. I mean, personally, to me, like, uh, you know, the mummy is like in my mind, I think because I think one of the first exposures I had was maybe like Svengoolie, mm-hmm. not the current Svengoolie, but the, there the was original like, there was Svengoolie, Svengoolie then yeah. there was Son of Svengoolie, then the new Svengoolie. Jesus, I don't know the history yeah, of Svengoolie. I have, no, yeah. there's, I mean, there's several I, of I them. I know there is a Svengoolie now. Yeah. He, he's not well, the first. He, oh, he's not the he first. He used no. to be. I didn't know he, he was not the first. He's Rich Cuz. He used to be the Son of Svengoolie. Okay. Yeah. But eventually he was able to get the rights to the name mm-hmm. of wow. the original guy. So there's been two guys. Okay. Right. But he was Son of and then <laughs> yeah. Svengoolie. Okay. And the original thought, Svengoolie was like a, just a big hippie. <laughs> he yeah. really was. He had like dreads and everything. He was oh, just gonna find that stuff it. on YouTube yeah. too. But I remember okay. the rich Kaz makeup. Yeah, because you know, I thought it was creepy. That's I was like line, eight though. or four yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And I remember seeing, you know, the mummy. So, or it was the mummy's hand, the mummy's tomb, curse, ghost, whatever. And I just remember this, you know, bandaged guy limping along, you know, with the hand strung over his chest and the other one strangling people. And that's to me has always been like my idea of the mummy, what it is. And then you see, you know, this movie yeah. and you're like, wow, that's not it at all. No. And this has actually got a lot more uh, thought, depth and intelligence to it. You want a good wrapped in bandages movie, mummy movie. Uh, it's actually a TV show. I think my favorite thing is, so it's only like 24 minutes long. Oh, yeah, you can it's an episode this, yeah. of Amazing Stories the uh, from 1985, the, the Steven Spielberg TV mm-hmm. show. Yeah. yeah, There's an episode called Mummy Daddy. Which you have to see. Of you have to see. It's great. Bronson Pinchot's in it, but that's like one of the. And then I think there was a bit from um, oh, the uh, the Tales from the Dark Side movie had a mummy with Christian Slater. Yeah, based on an Arthur Conan Doyle uh, story. Oh, I think really? Lot One Twenty Five or One Twenty Four or something like that. Uh, also a decent uh, wrapped in bandages mummy, but um, yeah, I think you know. These movies, they weren't, they don't necessarily define, um, you know, the, what the monsters are, you know, or what, or, 
cinematic horror is, but this mm-hmm. these are essential in the, the because they're like the building blocks, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like they mm-hmm. haven't actually locked it down into like the the film grammar of cinema no. horror. I mean, like but we wouldn't have we wouldn't be where we, we are yeah, without now them. Without we wouldn't them. be there, right? Yeah. That's yeah. why it's and essential. That's why if you have yes. to, this is the starting point. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But I think you know beyond that, like you know, I think this is a pretty good movie, The Mummy. Mm-hmm. Um. You know the the first couple were. I mean, Dracula is kind of hard to sit through now because it's a stage play and it's yeah. no score. It's very dry. I think the Mummy was one of the first movies. I think they had a little bit of a a score that wasn't library music, even though yeah. I did use Swan Lake at the beginning. And even then, it's just a little bit of a score. Yeah. There's a lot of dry There's scenes. A lot of I don't mind them. I don't no mind score. the dry yeah. scenes. It's when you get to Bride of Frankenstein. The guy who did the music to that is a uh, Franz Waxman. He actually used the light motive. Uh, idea of giving each character a theme okay and nice. so mm-hmm. you have is that I where that, that originates I from? love that yeah I don't know if it originates it there but I know that that's him. one of the first movies to actually have like a score full score like you'd recognize it today right yeah. okay that kind of thing um but some of the later, like the second set of mummy movie, or you know, the, the series of mummy movies that Universal did following this one, uh you know, they get they, they kind of touch and go like they start off OK and kind of deteriorate because basically you're getting this um, repetition of remaking the same movie and over and over again. Mm-hmm. They're basically I think I was describing them on, on Twitter. They're like Jason movies without the graphic <laughs> murders. Right. Uh-huh. So it's like, why the hell am I watching this? There's always a um, Egyptian guy in a fez who resurrects the mummy using a certain uh, potion made from Tana leaves. You feed him tana leaves. He comes back to life. Then you can control him. This is the Fez guy. And he sends them after the people who have desecrated the, uh, the tomb for four movies. So it's like the lineage of, you know, it ends up in like Louisiana or something. There's, you know, people with uh, torches. So he's just a tool of revenge in these movies. Yeah. Yeah. So that's also kind of disappointing. And Lon Chaney's like in it, in a, he never says a word. Right. Yeah. So it's like, All right. Not that Cheney's ever been the greatest actor, maybe ever, but Whoa, uh, hey. <laughs> hey man. Wow. Damn. You struck a nerve there. Yeah. I've I've been watching him like recently in these movies. I'm like, whoof, but maybe it's the you know the character. I mean Junior's probably a little better, right? Well that's what I'm I saying. I think uh, Junior's better. Uh, well, this is Junior I'm talking about. Are you talking Lon about Chaney Junior? Do so you yeah. think Lon Chaney Senior is better? The only thing I've seen of Lon Chaney Sr. was Phantom of the Opera. So my Which he did go through is, hell for it to, to oh, make yeah, that yeah, movie. Yeah. Like, He's good in physical it. Physical torture to for make not that saying movie. Yeah. But I mean, Lon Chaney Jr. You know, is the wolf man. He's the only guy who played all of the universal monsters. Yeah. Um, you know, because he was Dracula and son of Dracula, he was uh the Frankenstein monster, and he was in... forced into it. Like he, it was not something he wanted to do. It was you're this guy's son. You should do this. Yeah. Yeah. You'll make a lot yeah, of money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's not like the world's greatest. I mean, actor, but you know, whatever. Um, but you know, the, it's a thankless role. The mummy, you're all bandaged up. And you right. Don't say anything. It was just like Lon Chaney in. The mummy's hand. Well, what's that? Whatever. What's that famous quote from Boris Kala for this movie? Like he got into the eight hours of makeup done up for it, and then he told the costume artist, "Like you did a great job, but you forgot to give me a fly." Yeah, you know, yeah. like that's yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, it was like ten yeah. hours or something yeah. like that to get into that. You know, but that I think the Boris Karloff makeup in this is like the best mummy. Oh, yeah. uh, I think that I've ever seen. Like he looks like a dried up dead yeah. corpse. It looks great. Yeah. We he didn't even good. talk yeah. about that. that. It looks fantastic. Yeah, Jack Pierce is the makeup guy who did all that stuff. He did a very um, good job. And then I guess you know Rick Baker uh, keeps talking about like the fact that Universal used him. He created basically all the classic Universal monsters. And then when times changed and the way that makeup was used. Uh, and the materials would change. He yeah. stuck with his old like makeup kit kind of thing, yeah. mm-hmm. and wouldn't change with the time. And eventually, it was just dismissed by the company. It's like yeah. you know, because everybody was just kind of like a, it was like a factory. Yeah. You're factory employees. We get somebody else who can do it cheaper or whatever, and you yeah. go. And so there was never like the appreciation the for, appreciation for, for Jack what Pierce. He did yeah, yeah. Uh, and before I get out of here, the um, mummy movies that you should probably check out. And I didn't see, I have seen Michael Almoradis, Almoradis, The Mummy, which was an Irish mummy. She was buried oh, in the bog. Wow. And I saw that a hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah. I think it, is it Christopher mummy. Walken who's in that? What? He's down there in the peak. Of course he's in yeah. Because he was, it was Why the director right? of Nadja. Yeah. I saw that like in the 90s and whatever. 
Um, so much Pete. <laughs> But I think you should check out the Hammer one with uh, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing. That one's pretty good. Um, I really dug um, the blood from the mummy's tomb, which there's no wrap bandaged mummy. It's they find this body of this female mummy, but the guy who dug her up, his daughter, looks just like her. And there's like a soul transference thing going Uh. on. But it was actually pretty entertaining. Um, And the Brendan Fraser mummy... Like, I think, you know, if you've got the tw- the 2010 Wolfman, to me, is like a perfect, you know, example of rebooting a horror movie monster, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the, wol- the, the Mummy from 99, at the time, I didn't care for it because I'm like, they've yeah. totally thrown away the whole idea that this is a horror movie, and they made it an action-adventure sure. film, and yeah. so I was pissed. Yeah. It took me now, many Colin? years. Well, now watching it, it's like that movie is a lot of fun. It has a spirit and an energy, and it's just trying to be like entertainment for the whole family. And it does contain enough of the universal, you know, like it's a mummy movie. Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, there's it's trying you know, at least. Yeah. But it, I think it does it. It succeeds a lot better than Stephen Summers, the guy who made it. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like Mummy Returns. I didn't like Tomb of the Dragon Emperor. I didn't like his Van Helsing, which was Universal's. Oh, did he make Van Helsing? Yeah, that was oh, his. Jesus. That was Universal's yeah. attempt to get them all to do a modern day monster rally. He also did an Odd Thomas movie, which you should all avoid. But that's I digress. <laughs> yeah. So you know, and this new uh, the Tom Cruise one, it's like it had a tone and an atmosphere very different from the the Brendan Fraser one. Mm-hmm. But I liked it. Yeah. Kind of like if you're the type of person who liked uh, Victor Frankenstein, and again, Which you know did. who you are I, right I like, now. Yeah, I did like that. Then you might like mm-hmm. The Mummy, the new, the the Tom Cruise Mummy, because that one also, I think, had a 14% rating on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> and I'm like, well. but I well. like this movie. You know, it's yeah. not great. Right. But you're like, no, eh, yeah. it's not a bad movie. The new Mummy isn't a bad movie, you know, I don't think. You know, I think in hindsight, you know, people will be a little more kind to it than they are right now. Um, but you as far make, as... You make me want to see it with your comments on it. I'm just like... I, but I probably... I you it. don't necessarily need to pay... Maybe a matinee. Okay. All right, I can do <laughs> it. You don't need to pay for full, full price. Are you saying movie? Holly, Holly should take you? <laughs> oh, there, there you go. go. Yeah. 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 Holly, let's go see the movie. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but a final word on the 32 Mummy is you should see it. Definitely, it's a classic, uh, a uh, you know, a pillar I think in the yeah. the foundation of uh, horror cinema and worth checking out. So good. I'm going to, that's long winded. I'm going to get out of here. Uh, I'm going to turn the floor over to Sean, who's picking our next movie for next week. Sean, what do we watch? We are going to watch. Here it comes. Predator 2. Okay. Why? Yes. I'm so down. Oh. Predator 2. Well, I'm going to have some good stories about Oh, this it's going to be good. We well, thought it was going to be another movie. You thought it was. Yeah. But I said, fuck you guys. I'm watching Predator 2. I really two. didn't think. No. Nope. Predator 2. All right. Awesome. Well, I had right. to, this has been in my system for a little bit. I'm good. Like, get, it get, out. get it out. out. Get it that's, out. That's what my recent picks are. Like, I. I that's me recently, with breaking. You gotta get it out. It is. But <laughs> recently, I out. haven't had like a list of like, oh, I need to watch this and this. And, like, things have gotten into my system lately. I need to get them out. Halloween yeah. and now Predator 2. Yeah. You know, it. For it. ironically, uh, 2017 is the 30th anniversary of Predator. I know. All right. Okay. <laughs> We're going to do Predator 2. Predator 2. You guys all, all right. for it. Because we, <laughs> we can't do Predator. Because every other That's podcast not, yeah. is doing We're Predator. Gonna do Predator. We're, We're going to do Predator, Predator 2. 2. And it's Sean. Sean of sequels. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, it's Sean of sequels. sequels. Sean, yes. Sean, Sean of the sequel. sequel. Yeah. Sean, Sean to Electric Boogaloo. Yep. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Well, that's next week, and we hope you'll listen. And until then, we're going to go pay the electric bill, and the basement is going dark. <laughs>